Hey, and what's up guys, Yuris here and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Guys, over here we have the 45P Diorama Aquarium, which I have set up four months ago. And if you remember what it has looked like back then, okay, now brace yourself and check out how it's looking today. Oh my God, guys, this is so crazy overgrown. The, the, the layout has been running uh, the entire time as a dry start, uh, which is of course way too long. And our today's job is going to be to restore this one, to trim back the Monte Carlo, uh, to make it look nice and clean again, and also to siphon and replace the cosmetic sand, which now has attracted some uh, cyanobacteria here in the foreground. You can see that uh, section. And to do all this, I'm going to flood the tank with water to make my job easier, uh, trimming back the Monte Carlo. So I would say without any further ado, let's get started. Over here, I have my trusty Takagi uh, watering hose. And uh, let's start a little bit slowly in the beginning, filling up the aquarium with water. So let's, let's kick in a time lapse. Okay, um, so here we are back uh, after the little accident. Um, using here some of my trusty tools, I think I'm gonna use the wave cutter. Um, it's my, I don't know, like number one tool for cutting uh, carpeting plants. Here you go, this is the wave uh, cutter. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start from the back so you can see uh, best how deep um, I cut down the Monte Carlo. And the thing is, cut it down as deep as possible. Literally just leave maybe half a centimeter or yeah, maybe even less uh, Monte Carlo. Let's start here in one corner. from that side. goes and uh, yeah basically now going to work my way through uh, the entire carpet so starting from the back and then working my way down everywhere in between the rocks just cutting the Monte Carlo down It's also important if you have a little gaps like here, so you go in between and cut the Monte Carlo down, even in those little gaps. Try to keep it as low as possible in all, yeah, all over the layout. Always the same height measured from the surface of the soil. The best is really not to let your uh, Iwagumi become overgrown like this. Uh, but the main, main purpose of this video is to show you that 
even if it becomes overgrown like this, you can, uh, you can always get it back into nice shape. Uh, just takes, uh, you know, a little bit of time and patience and maybe a little bit of skill. And if you don't have the skill yet, you will get it when you uh, perform this kind of tasks. Because, you know, trimming a carpet in a no hardscape environment is easy. Trimming a carpet, you know, around this rocks and the small, the smallest gaps is definitely challenging. Okay guys, so I have just trimmed uh, that one side of the aquarium and uh, yeah, it's taken me quite a while. Now let's move on uh, to the other side of the aquarium. Uh, same thing happening here, uh, basically just trying to work my way uh, through the layout. Uh, I start from the back and I just chop down the Monte Carlo as far as I can see until uh, the rocks and then I have to check it from the front and trim it down further, more closer to the ground. Uh, unfortunately, and this is something I have noticed, that uh, if you let the Monte Carlo grow this tall, it's becoming a little bit leggy. And uh, yeah, the downside is it is not as dense as at the bottom as it could be already at this time. But well, no wonders because it hasn't been trimmed back even once uh, in the entire time. So yeah, all the growth has been uh, vertical for quite a while here. And uh, yeah, but just be gentle with it. Don't pull uh, on the stems because otherwise you're going to uproot it. Just be gentle, trim it down and then with good light and CO2, it is going to spread out and form a thick carpet. Uh, because, you know, now everywhere in between the rocks, it is rooted. Yes, it sits a little bit loose uh, and could be uprooted if you would pull on it. But uh, yeah, if you don't do it, uh, just be gentle. Let it grow and then it is going to fill in those gaps and it's going to secure even better over time. So, slowly working my way through. Yeah, that side here is a little bit more difficult. job is done with trimming for now. It's been uh, definitely not easy. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine for now. We can trim more later when it starts to grow back. Now I'm going to apply a little trick. I'm going to siphon out all the trimmings with a wet vacuum cleaner. It's a special device that I use to empty aquariums. There it is, in the back. So, protect your ears. was noisy but very effective. Uh, next, I want to remove that um, cyanobacteria infested La Plata sand. Basically to siphon out sand you need a bucket or a watering can, whatever, and uh, yeah, a tube. So let's get inside.
and then try to remove. That's top layer. So to get rid of as much of this junk as possible, just using my tweezers to clean the front glass a little bit in that area. There you go. Let's siphon out that remaining dirt. So what is next? Next, we are basically going to refill uh, that cosmetic sand area and then uh, yeah, just drain the entire water and prepare the tank to be transported. So there we go with a little bit of La Plata. shines bright like a diamond. A little bit artificial in the beginning, but it is going to settle over time. So what we do now, we just restore our cosmetic sand path all the way from the back. I'm going just to top off the entire path from the back with fresh La Plata. Okay, if we look at it now, it looks a little bit uh, how does it look like? It's fine, we have a straight line in the front. The only thing I have to do now is to drain the water and then the job is done. Maybe then add some more uh, like additional details to the layout. So guys, the water is now drained and I have previously refilled the cosmetic sand path. And now comes the final step. I have here uh, some uh, cosmetic gravels. So, so I'm going to sprinkle the sand path um, to bring back in the details and yeah, it doesn't have to be super perfect or whatever. I just sprinkle them along the sand path and towards the foreground to help separate it from the sand. So this might look like a little bit too much, um, but it really is not. Some of it is going to crumble down. Some of it is going to be 
siphoned out, uh, you know, during maintenance. And as a final touch, just give it some cosmetic sand on top. And there you see how natural it all blends together. Yes, of course, the color, it's still wet, but as soon as we spray them down, they get the same dark color and with a little bit of time, they will get this patina like the other rocks. So, this is it. The job is done here, guys. You can check it out from all sides. Well, uh, maybe not too interesting from the back and from the side. Uh, this layout is literally made just to be seen from the front with this little uh, valley here in the middle. I think I really enjoy uh, this layout and um, yeah, um, from now on it's going to be uh, located again at customer's place. Uh, it's going to be filled up with water. Um, hardware wise we are having here the Twinstar 450 E series. Uh, it is run on a small and compact size canister filter by Eheim. I think the 2213, that's the classic 250, you know, just general small canister size uh, filter. Uh, pressurized CO2, of course, yes, it's going to be fine. Uh, I will try to make another update video once it has uh, settled, uh, submerged and once the animals are inside. And guys, and if you enjoyed watching this video, show me with a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, goodbye.